Welcome back to Heroes Next Door. Thank you all for watching. We are back in Montclair, New Jersey. We're going to be taking a look at their special service unit. Uh, they got a lot of cool things on this. They have a trailer. They got a little mini ambulance that we're going to take a look at. Let's go talk to their chief and their deputy chief. They're going to tell us all about it. How you doing today? How you doing? All right. Welcome thanks, back. Yeah, thanks for inviting us back out. So last time we were out here, we uh, took a look at this real quick, but yeah. we want to get an inside look. Can you kind of show us around? Absolutely. What is this specifically called? So this is Unit 26, or it's a prime mover uh, assigned through the New Jersey EMS Task Force. As I mentioned last time, New Jersey EMS Task Force is a uh, um, nonprofit entity with host uh, agencies throughout the state that host equipment and provide manpower for the task force to operate. As part of that, they give us some cool toys. Okay, and this is a what? This is a pickup truck. Okay. It's a Ford F550. Uh, we can put a plow on the front. Okay. Uh, so during snow season, we actually put the plow on when snow starts and it just stays on for the rest of the season. So, you know, DPW might be busy plowing streets. We can plow in front of our ambulance if need be. Okay. Um, and it's been used for a variety of different things. This made its way to the U.S. Virgin Islands after a hurricane. Okay. As part of the task force response down there. How did it get down there? Uh, Air Force Transport. Okay. We drove it down to uh, McGuire Air Force Base or Joint Base Fort Dix McGuire now. Yeah. And they put it on one of their uh, C-130. It was a C-130. C-130 and flew Alpha flew. Man, Alpha that's flew. pretty cool. With that, uh, and the ASAP. Wow. Both okay. of them went down there okay. with some per with some personnel. Right. As now, well as other equipment. This has a Redding basically toolbox on it, right on the back. Yeah. With a Tommy lift. Yep. It's got the lift on the back, so the whole idea is, you know, we can put pallets of equipment on there if need be and not kill anyone's back. Doing uh, it. All right. Do you mind walking us through the cabinets? See what Absolutely. you have inside. This is primary. Um, this unit's not necessarily a response for like an emergency medical call, even though there's a jump kit and an AED in it in case we need it. But this is to support the mission, okay? Whatever that mission may be. So we try to prepare for everything. Um, this cabinet's got a five kilowatt generator and enough extension cords to probably go across this town. <laughs> because you just never know. We also have different variety of trailer hitches just because we never know what we're going to trailer. This was essential during Hurricane Sandy as well as other events. We would get down to uh, Brick, New Jersey. Hey, we need you to tow this trailer or this generator or whatever the joint. Do you have a hitch for it? We make sure we have a hitch for it. Right, right. So you can have light towers, you can have different trailers, generator you trailers, trailers, trailers. You know, yes. call, your special service vehicle or yep. your ASAP. This goes to different kind of things. Each one maybe has inch and two eighths, inch two two inch. Yeah. Yep. There's no standard hitch, right? right. <laughs> um, I looked during, also during Hurricane Sandy, uh, there was a nursing home evacuation that was local. We went to assist the uh, responding squad, and when we did. Uh, this was essential. We just loaded it up with uh, wheelchairs while the ambulances and special other equipment like the medical ambulances, buses, transported the patients. Right. So the receiving nursing facility had enough of equipment. Yeah, yeah, this, that's this awesome. This is a great catch-all truck. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's large enough box on the back that you could actually put one of the hospital stretchers in if you need yeah. to. Um, pretty sure I'm not positive. It's probably happened. <laughs> during when they went down the Virgin Islands, I think that's what they did when they evacuated one of the hospitals and they loaded this up with hospital structures. Yeah, yeah. Um, in this compartment, along with the uh, staging trailer, we also have a flatbed trailer that's not here right now. But anytime we need to load pieces of equipment, we need to make sure it's secured, fastened. Ratchet, ratchet straps. straps, toe straps, moving equipment. Any way we need to secure something, we have the capability of doing that. Okay. Um, as well as when we get on scene, uh, depending on what the situation may be, we use uh, we use a lot of Western shelters uh, with the task force. So we have equipment to secure it, um, equipment to get in there, uh, halogen bar, axes, a lot of hammers. Um, and you never know where, what type of situation we're going to be in, so we've got two gas siphons as oh, well. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> you never know what, if there's going to be running gas, Exactly, right? especially with the hurricanes they come through. You don't know what's contaminated, yep. you need fresh gas, of course. Um, so. In this compartment is basically a true compartment. We have a battery-operated um, drill as well as a ratchet set. 
Um, and this is what we call the big dumb toolbox because it's heavy, but okay. nothing ever gets damaged. You know? <laughs> right. So this is just your hand tools. Yeah. Just the hand, All so, hand, so, tools. hand tools. So if you need to take an awning down or something like that, that's what this is going to be used exactly. for. Exactly. Okay. I mean, a lot of the stuff we have in here is like, I don't know if we're ever going to need this. Because we say that, there's a good chance we're going to need exactly. it. Exactly. You're eliminating Murphy. Yes. <laughs> we try. So, okay. And take then a walk around. up front. It's a four door, obviously. Four so you door. Can carry, how many personnel do you normally carry on a job? Well, I mean, uh, if it's going out in response, the minimum is one person, right? Okay. Just the driver. But we can take up to four or five people with this vehicle okay. to wherever we're going. Gotcha. So sometimes it might be a request for equipment, whereas you just need a driver yep. and they're going to supply the bodies. Okay. Or uh, uh, they're going to ask you for equipment and manpower. And we can toss a bunch of manpower. Right, right. Okay. Um, and sometimes they just specifically ask us for the manpower. During the train derailment in Jersey City, um, they initially called us part of the Essex County uh, strike team. We went down there and they needed people to help out with staging. And okay. They didn't need our trailer, this, but they need they our need, bodies. They need our bodies. They need people with experience with staging. So right. that's what we provided. Okay. Um, in this compartment is kind of our uh, catch-all compartment. Uh, zip ties, because you never know when you're going to need them. Turnout jackets because you don't know the environments that you're going to be in, as well as helmets, goggles, and this is a bench seat for our actual personnel. Right. Uh, that we get according to bench seat. And there's a a, uh, a vice grip that we could put in the trailer hitch. Okay. So you could put a vice grip on the trailer hitch and turn it into a workstation instead of like going on the ground and trying to cut something on the yeah, ground. We could yeah. do it right on the back. Of the okay. Chair. Okay. Uh, this is our lighting compartment. This okay. has got two Pelican. Um, light stands with uh, LED lights as well as blood pressures, uh, blood pressure cuffs. Chargers for the lights and back there you can't really see it. There's two, uh, we call them like torpedoes because they're just long lights that we can stand up okay. and it, it, you, can, you can manipulate the configurations of it so it, it gives you a, either a circular view, a full range of just like, all right, I need to hit that spot. I could just make it hit that spot. Okay. So in the blood pressure cuffs, you just, are the automatic cuffs or those are all no, just no, manual? Those are all manual. Okay. In this case, just to make sure That's I understand, two this is an actual light case. Yes. That has two tripoding lights that come out okay. and you can face different directions. Okay. So it's just self-contained in that. Yep. Yeah. All right. Um, and the charge for these are probably like almost 12 to 24 hours. Okay. That, so we can set them up. These were essential during the uh, nursing home evacuation. Yeah. Okay. One last cabinet here. We've got another generator, five another 5K. Yeah. Two more light, light stands. These are hand lights and a small space heater. Okay. Yeah, it's always important to have heaters because it, today's hot, but the rest of the uh, year is not always that hot. So. Particularly if we're transporting the ASAP in here, when this isn't really on, it's not climate controlled, so you need the space here. Okay, so the ASAP actually fits in the kick, in the trailer. It's a pain, but it fits. Uh, let's go take a look how that's done. Let's, what do you have in this thing? So this is uh, there's two parts to this thing. There's a, a more of like a command portion, um, work area, and then there's a large back area that's pretty much open. You can do what you want with it. Okay, so you can do a treatment area, or you could do a, a staging area for new personnel, yeah. or something like that. You could do anything like that. You could fit a, some equipment in there. We recently helped. Uh, for the uh, Mountainside Hospital had a tent up for COVID. We removed the tent in the HVAC system. We put it in the back of here to get out. Okay. So we have it set up right now for more like a treatment. So we got a cot over here. Right, right. Yeah, this is actually huge. You could actually put that down and actually roll a stretcher in here too. You roll stretchers in yep. here. You right. can roll the, like, the ASAP. You can roll a lot of things in here. Right, you right. Different spots on the floor where you can connect and uh, secure things. Tie down. Almost to put a curtain in here and have two different treatment areas if you yeah. needed to. Yeah. During yeah. larger events such as the jazz festival and, and the um, the pride event, we've also used this for responder rehab. So when the police officers are out there for like three, four hours in the heat, come here, cool down. We usually have a cooler with water, food, snacks, stuff like that. Coffee. Um, Gotta coffee. Have Gotta have coffee. Gotta have coffee. Yeah. coffee. Um, I'm a Diet Coke man, so. <laughs> then we have Diet Coke. And what's really interesting is they come and we usually like post, uh, put the map of whatever event that we're working on, and at least it gives them everybody a, a good situational awareness of right. what's happening. Right. I love the fact that it's so high too. It, it feels like a really big room to get things done, and a universal room that you can get the different tie downs and set up whatever you whatever need. Whatever you need, yeah. and how you need. It. Yeah. Uh, yeah. This went down. There was a 14 alarm fire at the sake couple towns over it was a recycling facility the ASAP was requested to go because of the access issues in case a fire fire went down 
we took it with this. Right. Because it gave us also, it was like, you know, January 5th, so it was nice and cold outside. This gave us a nice heated area to relax and have the crew staging in here as opposed to out in the elements. That, that's absolutely perfect. And I can see how that ASAP fits in here. It, yeah. it, it, there's plenty it, it, of room. Yeah, but once it's in here, it's very tight. We right. have to actually take the door off the ASAP to be able to get out of here. <laughs> But, um, yeah. but it fits. It, it, it does fits. what it needs to it do. So, it to do. Uh, the other thing is, you know, we were just outside. It's almost 90 degrees out today. It seems like, like it right it, yeah. It's and you walk in here, even with the door open, it, it's nice. Yeah. You know. So it's got two AC. Okay. You got one in this section and one in this section. Okay. We turn them both on to make sure we're nice and chill. Yeah, it's it's nice and cold in here. So, and, and out front is your command posts. Yeah, so it, it, it's a command post. It can be used for any number of things, but we, you know, we've got a little bit of everything. We got a command board here, much like we had in the EOC. All of this surface practically is whiteboard. Okay. So we can sit here and write like you know, anytime we have a mass event or a mass gathering, and we're using this. Somebody is sitting in here just writing down the timestamps of patient contact, trans this unit transport. So that way when we go at the end of the day and fill our forms. Right, right. That's a brilliant idea. Did that come that way or did yeah, you guys yes. have to think about it? Way. It came about that. So yeah. whoever's manufacturing these things knows what they're doing. They, they, it was spec'd out that way for them, I believe. Right. Uh, uh, again, EMS task force. Right. And we've got... Uh, digital radio system which is what we're on okay we got a VHF and a UHF so we have full radio interoperability oh. for wherever we're going right right um, we have Wi-Fi okay so the trailer itself has Wi-Fi okay and I've got a phone that works like almost like a landline yeah yeah wow it's voice over IP okay put it on a speaker right yeah that's one of the things that we don't see often we always rely on our cell phones nowadays is yeah. you know it's seeing landlines you know, some of the younger generation may not even know what that is anymore. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> um, it looks like you also have a weather station? We do. So this will get you very basic weather information. We're not getting radar with it or anything, but we're going to get, you know, wind speed, wind direction, humidity. Okay. okay. Uh, it also plugs into, um, like, the Cameo Marplot programs for hazardous materials plumes. Right. Um, when we've gone down to other industrial fires, um, I literally just pull it up on the computer, plug it in, and all of a sudden I'm watching the bloom live. Okay. It's the best example. Right, right. Um, and then when we go back outside, I'll show you where it is up top. It's just we keep it in the bottom of a pelican case and okay. deploy it as needed. Okay. And this weather station, which we uh, named, uh, which was named Dorothy, uh, <laughs> is completely wireless, so that we don't have to worry about a wire coming in from the outside. Sure. Um, we also have, uh, in addition to that, a hazmat weather station. Uh, specifically for that, but that Dorothy gives us a little bit more. Man, and say we're working on like something that's a little bit more mission sensitive, like step in, we got a door. Oh, the pocket door. Yeah, if it's not too far in. <laughs> and this is also whiteboard. Right. So you can close that, maybe close keep that. privacy of a patient yeah. that you might you got be working. Patients in the back. Right. Or if you got something that's going on that we don't want, you know, everyone in the back to hear. We right. Can close the door. Man, this is absolutely beautiful. The other big thing about this, this is a staging area management trailer. If there's something big going on, such as the Super Bowl, um, uh, Jazz Festival, uh, Pride Fest, you sure. name it, we deploy this, and we've also deployed this for a full-scale uh, two-county exercise. Okay. Where we actually staged 109 different vehicle apparatus from fire, police, and, uh, and EMS at Montclair State University. And we literally pulled up, and uh, the time they gave us was the same time everybody else was showing up. <laughs> so we literally had to pull up. Somebody was like literally putting that in park, and we're like, we gotta go. And we have it set up. So each station area manager's got their own crew, their own paperwork. Yeah. Made, so you could just hand this down. You got your vest hand down out there. the vests. Yeah. And go from there. And those vests are the ID vests. Tells you who, who's what they, and where they're standing. Literally assistant staging area, staging area manager, manager, access crew leader, supply coordinator. Right. Uh, all these match up to these. So you're following the national standards of NIMS of the um, smart triage Absolutely. setup. That's, that's exactly yes. what you're yeah. doing. Yes. And, yes. And it, that's, we are really trying to be as NIMS compliant as possible. Um, some outside agencies, when we do events in town, come to us like, wow, you're actually doing a briefing, a debriefing, here's yeah, your IEP. for everyone, yeah. And the way, the way we look at it is every time we have a big event in town, from the festivals to what have you, we practice, 
that way if something actually does happen it's routine for us everybody right. knows how to fill out a 214 everybody knows how to do this okay. um and it also helps with re reimbursement from fema <laughs> yeah yeah because you're, um, you're marking all the ticks they need so over here we have uh, regular office supplies some just basic regular radios which people are like oh why do you use those because you never know when the things are going to fail yeah. every bit of ICS paperwork because okay. the internet can always fail right right and with the radios, one of the biggest problems that we had, especially during 9-11, we lost a lot of radio communications. Yes. Yeah. So using a standard walkie-talkie uh, was very useful because we didn't need those towers for that. We could do mobile to mobile. So, you know, exactly. yes, this is great information, but when it goes down, you need a backup. Need a backup. Exactly. That's why all the ICS forms and everything else is downloaded to the computer. The Marplot is the downloaded desktop version. That way, the online version is beautiful. Right. I don't have internet, that's not going to help me. Right. Um, which also became an issue during Sandy, especially down the shore. There was no internet, there was no inf real good infrastructure. So we're working off of paper, pen, and going back to the pretty right. much. How long does it take you to set this whole thing up? I can, we can have this set up within 30 to 45 minutes. Man, that's quick. So yeah. if we have the right, if I have the right people, which most of our guys are, uh, like when we uh, pull this up here, turned it on and we can start handing out vests pretty soon. Man, that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, and this is all thanks to the New Jersey EMS Task Force, yep. um, the funding from the Montclair residents, because we are a not-for-profit 501c3. Um, so this is all because of them and we hope we never have to use it. Right. But so if you need to use it, how would somebody go about requesting this kind of service? So something like this, there's two or three key ways to get it, right? Somebody could call 911, um, not 911, but Montclair Police Dispatch, uh, and they would call us, and they might look at us like, what, they want a trailer or something? Right. And we would have to decipher that. <laughs> um, the other way would be through, uh, University Hospital has their own dispatch system, which is called REMCS, R-E-M-C-S. Okay. They handle all dispatching for EMS task force assets, so they would get the call saying, we need a staging trailer and we need it in this county or this municipality. Okay. They're going to reach out to a county coordinator uh, and say, we need it here. Okay. And we're going to, they're going to see which one's the closest, who, who has the best staffing that can make it happen. Okay. Um, we have a very good re working relationship with our Essex County EMS coordinator. So he knows if he makes a phone call, 99% of the time, whatever he's asking for, we're giving it. Right. So, right. Um, you know, a couple weeks ago, he called me at four o'clock in the afternoon. There was a larger fire uh, in Elizabeth, New Jersey. Do you have an ambulance? We're sending ambulances. Like, okay, yeah. yeah. Where are they going? They're on the road now. Where are they going? So, it, it, that's the that's the other way that somebody can get the trailer. They can call the county coordinator. Okay. And the county coordinator can say, okay, we'll send the trailer, and then he'll make those notifications. That's awesome. To, uh, reps. Yeah. So where I come from, we have what we call Com One. It's pretty much a, a, a mobile home that can go on. It has the same kind of setup that you have here, uh, but that's a county resource and it only usually stays in the county. But they can use it for police, they can use it for fire, they can use it for EMS. Do you guys also support all three entities? Yes, absolutely. We're, we're a brotherhood. We work together. Okay. Like, uh, the Pride Fest, this wasn't even scheduled to be there and the police department was like, no, we need that. Like, we have a command trailer ourselves, but it's like a smaller truck, uh, just a mobile command bus. Right. Deal. It's like, no, we want this. We, it gives us a little bit more room in case we need some space. Awesome. And that way the, the guys out in the street can come in here and not worry about a white shirt. Not that they have to ever worry about that. <laughs> right. But they like to sit down, have a slice of pizza, relax. Yeah. And at least that way the command people where I was at the Unified Command Center, we sat there and then it just it worked out really, really well. And this finally stayed with EMS. That way we weren't bothering the fire people. He was reporting to me to the Unified Command Center. It worked really, really well. Awesome. So we have one more piece of this the whole apparatus, and that's your ASAP. Yes. Yep. I call it your as soon as possible unit, but <laughs> <laughs> it works. Uh, yeah. Can we go take a look at that real quick? Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Uh, before we go on and show you guys this vehicle, do us a favor: hit subscribe, hit notification, and hit that like button. It really helps our algorithm. We're trying to get that 100,000 subscriber mark, and with your guys' help, we're going to be able to do that. Without further ado, let's take a look at their. Uh, Special service. So this is our ASAP or, or ASAP number 15. Okay. Um, this also, like the pri the uh, prime mover, the pickup truck we saw before, went down to the U.S. Virgin Islands via Air Force Transport, and then a slow boat back. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this can go off road, snow, you know, trails, or 
hard to access site. So we have a lot of festivals or street fairs in town. You're not getting an ambulance down that street. So we could take this and go up and down the street. Is it four wheel drive, six wheel drive? It's six wheel drive, yeah. Six wheel drive, man. Yeah, you're definitely not getting stuck with that. Not getting stuck with that. <laughs> and up front is pretty much just like a regular ambulance. Just right? like a regular ambulance. So it's, uh, love the suicide doors going old yep, school. <laughs> old school suicide doors. You've got um, the ability to go either the full six wheel or instead of the six wheel, you can do just the two wheel. Okay. And that's what you leave in normally. Right. And then you got full lights. So you it's got, got lights and sirens and everything. Lights, you... sirens, everything, a radio, uh, two radios. Okay. Generator. Even a windshield wiper. The generator kicks on. Okay. Scene lighting. Oh, it starts right up. Starts right up. Yeah, yeah. So this is awesome. Can we take a look at the back yeah, and see how absolutely. that's set up? It doesn't necessarily have the outside compartments like a regular no, aim. It doesn't have like the outside compartments. But, but you do have storage. You still have storage. You still have storage up at the top here. We keep a backboard here to the side, AD, a mass care kit. We, so we could, in theory, if there's a mass uh, casualty incident, of a, like a shooting or a uh, explosive device, we, we have enough to treat 16 victims right away. Oh, wow. There. Okay. Okay. And ASAP is the person that made this. Yeah, this, ASAP that, is the company. They call it an ASAP and it's the company that made it. Right. right, right. Yeah. I kind of like it. As soon as possible. Exactly. <laughs> And, and you know you're getting there. You got everything that you absolutely need. Do you mind if I step in? Absolutely. Yeah. Go right ahead. So as I come in, I got plenty of room. I mean, I'm you know five foot eleven, five foot ten. Depending you have, on you still the, have headroom. Good, I got plenty of headroom. The door didn't get in the way either. It's a roll up kind it's of door. door. So and then you know it got a full size stretcher. It's not a mini stretcher or anything like that. Nope. I can really work on any patient here. So this has plenty of room for ALS, right? Absolutely. So actually we were uh, uh, in Jersey City as a request of the task force for July 4th fireworks. And we were at a staging area and they had an ALS unit that didn't have one of these. They had a, B they had a couple BLS units as well like us with these. And so we kind of became the ALS dri driving them around in case they had a job. Yeah, right, right. That's, this is absolutely awesome. I think every company or every township should have at least one of these. They can get into places that you normally can't. They're walking trails, over railroad tracks, whatever you need to get to. And like we said last time, you know, bike teams are a great concept, but you know, you're, you're limited just a little bit, right? Like by people's endurance. Yeah. Whereas yeah. with this. Yeah. The, uh, Montclair also has seven train stations within the township. <laughs> and we hear that going by now. <laughs> um, and when we have somebody injured on the tracks, this is literally just essential because there's big, like almost mile long gaps that we can just drive up. Once we know the track has been stopped and all the trains, we can drive this up to get that injured person. Okay. okay. Um, as well as a reservation that borders our town with our neighboring town, Cedar Grove Mills Reservation, where we've been requested there to help people out that have got injured. Falling off the trail or something. Like we can go in there with right. this and get them out. Yeah, that's awesome. Instead of, you know, hiking a mile and a half or whatever with <laughs> gear. Exactly. So, um, if case no one's watched the video before, which you should, if you are watching this video, go back and watch the Montclair video about their station cribs. It was an excellent uh, day uh, spending time with you. So, I want to tell these guys, how would they go about working with you guys? Yeah, so uh, we, are, we are a paid department. You go to MontclairEMS.org. That's where you can fill out the application. It's an easy Google form. It goes right to me. Uh, Michael and I review all applications. Also, you maybe you don't you aren't interested in EMS. You're not looking to you know go into the healthcare field, but you want to make a donation. You can donate right there on the website. And there's a whole list of different like uh, supplies that we use on a daily basis and how much they cost. Yeah. So you have an idea what that money will be used for. Well, guys, I appreciate you showing us around. This was an excellent uh, station. Thanks rigs. for coming out. Thank you very uh, much. It's something you know a tool that's that's useful, and yeah. you guys are doing well uh, by doing it. So we appreciate it. Thank you. So, Thank you. Thank you for watching Heroes Next Door. This was another Station Rigs with Montclair EMS out of New Jersey. If you're ever in the area, you want to take a look, stop by. I'm sure they give you a tour. Thank you all for watching. But before we end, hit subscribe, hit notification. Keep smashing that like button so we can get to that 100,000 subscriber mark. We'll see you again next week.